Hey everybody. So I have not been sleeping well this week. Just a heads up. It's a lot going on. It feels like everything feels real heavy right now. I mean, everybody's kind of waiting, right? There's this feeling of just waiting. And the thing about it is they've kind of primed everybody to be waiting for something to suck. <laughs> that is really what is filling the void of the waiting. And I hate that because I feel like if, even if you really did think that a bunch of really terrible stuff was going to happen, if everybody just decided instead, we're going to fill the waiting with something awesome, I think it would be better. <laughs> even if the really bad thing. I mean, can you imagine, go back four years ago, we all know what was going on then. Can you imagine if everybody just shunned that, like the Amish, and then went inside and queued up like an 80s playlist instead? <laughs> just nobody came to the party. Can you imagine the difference, what kind of world we'd be living in now versus what that was? Can you imagine the difference? I just decided to talk to you for a minute. I'm having a cup of coffee too, by the way. So. I just decided to talk to you a minute, though, because, which you know is not going to just be a minute, so anyone who has to go, just go, because I'm probably just going to blather. They've done everything they can to really make it seem like this eclipse. I mean, this is the weirdest week ever for just the news and the way that this eclipse has been presented to the populace. I mean, if the if the real goal was just to tank any last trust at all that there are adults in the room of this society, <laughs> like I feel like that's what they're doing, okay? I feel like that's the level. They want people to think that this is about to be this nightmare. I said, Fill up your gas tanks, but you're not going to be able to drive anywhere if you're like in my town, where I guess NASA is supposedly coming here tomorrow. I believe this town, we're in a small little town in the middle of Texas, but I think it's the first halfway decent sized town to be in the complete totality for the full amount of time in America as it starts to come across the country. So they're expecting all these people here. They canceled school. They're charging $100 for parking spaces at my kid's school. They preemptively called out an, an emergency declaration for the county weeks in advance. I went for a walk last night. There was barely any extra traffic. I mean, it, there's nothing, you know, but fill up your gas tanks, but you also aren't going to be able to drive anywhere. And stock up your fridge, but there's not going to be any food. There is, though. I mean, on Monday after Easter, there was no food for, well, I mean, there was food, but there was like the meat and veg was completely cleaned out, picked over. But it came back the next day, you know, um, oh, get your glasses, but the glasses, they're doing a thing about the glasses might not be officially good, so that could be bad this time. And gosh, what else? Oh, they changed they changed the calculations of the path of the thing or something, and it changed where <laughs> like they've been saying where it's gonna be for all these years in the lead up, but then the week before, they're like, oh, we did the calculations wrong. <laughs> the week out they're like oh the calculations maybe they weren't right <laughs> like, <laughs> the final straw was when my mother sent me this article about the bats the bats in austin might get freaked out <laughs> the bats in austin might get freaked out by the eclipse because there's a famous bridge in austin on congress and the there's all the whole bunch of bats under there we've been there we've seen the bats fly it's cool but also, bats are nocturnal, okay? And yes, I guess it'll get dark for four minutes, but are the bats going to freak out? Oh my gosh! <laughs> they want everyone else to freak out, and not the bats, too. You know, look, even if space velociraptors with lasers shooting out of their eyeballs fall out of space down to Earth, okay? Being all upset about... <laughs> all day and just anxiously waiting for that blank to be filled in with something terrifying will not help you in that moment if the velociraptors hit the ground and start running like it just will not help you it will not help your 
body. It will not help your brain. It will not help your spirit. It will not help you. It will not help the people around you who are also walking into that energy field that you are exuding of that frequency. It won't help anyone. You know, I am a very staunch defender of individualism. Obviously, if you followed my channel at all, you know this, but we interact and communicate with each other all the time, every single day, without speaking. We are so much more than we've been told. It's actually really sad because they've gotten so many people to believe it. A couple days ago, when I was not sleeping, I was reading about unified field theory and resonance. And I just want to remind everyone, and I've done videos kind of about this in the past, but I just want to remind everyone right now, today, before the next two years happen, before 2030 gets here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I just want to read something to you to think about and try to give maybe a piece of advice that will help someone else out there. But I want to read this quote first because I think it'll help me to explain this. I am not, I'm not a quantum physicist. You know, I think I'm probably a scientist, but you know, in that sense of if, if this was 200 years ago, I would have that weird basement with all the tables on it that have a bunch of stuff and I'd be down there tinkering a lot. That's the kind of scientist I would have been. Resonance is experienced and even identified as the process being responsible for the forms of what we perceive observe, or infer based on it, an atom, a flower, planets, galaxies. It binds together the different elements that make up physical reality and allows interaction between them. It is the main factor for feedback to be possible, the conduit, shall we say, through which the exchange of information happens. The external can penetrate the internal and the internal can manifest outside. The condition for that channel to be available is the coincidence in energy, that the inner and outer energies are compatible, that they have the same frequency. And that's a quote from a physicist named Inez Urdaneta, and I found it here at the ResonanceScienceFoundation.org website in this article from July 2022 titled, What is Resonance and Why is it so important? And the picture I shared with it is this picture that I found that has the cymatic frequency of human vowel sounds. There's the Mayan calendar there. You have the CERN Large Hadron Collider there, which interestingly, when they say it, they don't mention that it's, a, it's toroidal, but it is. Toroidal being this image down here in the corner, which is the, the shape of the energy field of probably everything. That's my guess. And the rest of these are famous church windows. And all of these things look like if you were looking down into a toroidal field, this image, this shape is that shape. So you're in the middle of that <laughs> all the time. You are in the middle of a field. You are vibrating. Everything is vibrating. This whole place is vibrating. Everything vibrates. We have a pretty interesting complex system that we are walking around inside of each one of us. It's, it's an electrochemical system. When you have an emotion, it's not just chemistry that's happening there. That is an electrochemical thing that is happening. And people focus on the chemistry part and they completely overlook or just don't think much about the electric part but it's both. And I found this, there's a website called sixseconds.org, which has to do with emotional intelligence. And this lady, Dr. Candace Pert, she wrote a book called Molecules of Emotion. I'm just going to quote a couple lines from her. She says, we're not just little hunks of meat. We're vibrating like a tuning fork. We send out a vibration to other people. And I know some people, like I said, don't 
don't want it. They, they're worried that this is new agey talk if I start talking about vibrations and it like shuts their, shuts them down from hearing what is being said. You have to learn to take what is useful and leave the rest if it doesn't, what do they say? Resonate with you. But you can't write off whole sections of the actual reality just because certain groups of people that you don't agree with, like some of their other philosophy or their other opinions about what's going on here, use those words too. I mean, I feel like people are getting really tribal about words. Like you're not allowed to use the words. And if you use a word too much in one group that the other group doesn't, then they can't it's like, no, everything about vibration is now some new agey concept. I mean, yeah, okay, it is, but it's also everywhere and just a fact that this is, I mean, it's the way things are. This is where we've been put. So whether or not you think this is all just some random coincidence or you think this is a grand design, I personally think it's a grand design. Um, but look at it. Everything's vibrating everything. I mean, I'm talking to you right now. That's my voice. I'm, I'm saying words, but it's vibe. It sounds, and those sounds are vibrating and those vibrations are energy right now as I speak. So she says, you you think about this as chemistry, right? She's talking about neurotransmitters called, called peptides are carrying emotional messages in your body. And the messages that these things carry change the chemistry of your cells in your body. She says, of course, this is chemistry, but it's also physics and vibrations. Neurotransmitters are chemicals, but they carry an electrical charge. The electrical signals in our brains and bodies affect the way cells interact and function. So you have receptors on every cell in your body, which are actually little mini electrical pumps, she says. And when the receptor is activated by a matching molecule of motion, quote unquote, the receptor passes a charge into the cell changing the cell's electrical frequency as well as its chemistry, electrochemical, it's both. So just as our individual cells carry an electrical charge, so does your body as a whole, like an electromagnet generating a field. So we're actually sending out various electrical signals. We're sending out vibrations. And it only makes sense if everything is vibrating and that's the system in your body and how it works, then that only makes sense that you would send out a signal it's basic law of physics that when you're close to an energy source, it has a greater effect and that, dimin and that diminishes as you move further away. But when you are far away, there's no effect. But I don't know about that even. Personally, I, you know, the, the feeling of gut instinct when somebody walks in a room and you get a gut feeling, we always call it a gut feeling. And for whatever reason, you're like, I don't want to make eye contact with Whoever that is over there, I just have a feeling it's probably not in my best interest to do so. It's not just paranoia. You're picking up on a vibration that is a frequency that's very mismatched with what you've got going on. And whatever that is, it's not, it doesn't feel good. You know, I have had a bad feeling come off of a person from the distance of a football field. And I don't have that great of eyesight. So that person was a blur. They were way down there. All I could see was that they were wearing like a black clothes, but I couldn't make out anything else. No facial features, no expressions. And I knew instantly that at that moment, when that person stepped foot on that same field that I was in, I knew instantly. And I turned my head and I looked that way. And there I saw a figure walking very far in the distance. And I immediately knew. Whatever interaction I have with that figure isn't going to be very good. And I knew it instantly. And it wasn't. It ended up not being very good. This was back in 2013 at Zilker Park in Austin. And I still remember it. So we're talking about frequency at this point and resonance. And these things carry information. There's information, obviously, in that frequency because that's what tells your cells to do different things in your body when you have certain emotions. So the whole way the system works is you're constantly sending and receiving information. That's how that works. And so what happens, do you think, 
when these frequencies are being slowed way down because the emotions that you're feeling are things like shame, guilt, fear, anger, all the negative stuff. I'm gonna, here's a chart. This is from Joe Dispenza's book, Becoming Supernatural, which is a very, very interesting book, actually. A lot of stuff in there about all of the stuff I just talked about. And he's got this scale of the different emotions and the energies of those emotions. And you could clearly see right away, the higher the emotion, the higher the frequency, the higher the vibration. That's what's going on. That's Look at these waves. You can see it. It's very plain. See this one down here, victimization? Look at that. I think I think that's, if I had to take a stab in the dark, I would say that is why we have so, so much pressure to push people to label themselves in various victim columns in, in recent years and then kind of own that as an identity. Because if you are walking around as a victim, look how low that is on this on this scale of frequency. You are a walking transmitter of these super low, dense frequencies. It's not good for you. And by the way, look at where freedom is on that list. Way up there. Look at that. Look at freedom. Freedom on this list is above love even. I was surprised to see that personally. Freedom's above love. wonder why it is that they don't... <laughs> want people to talk about freedom because you're not free if you're a victim right if you've if you've taken on all these labels and you've decided that's your entire identity and your perceptional window to the world is through the lens of being a victim then that's you're enslaved and you're down here in this very low area and i just think that's what they're doing with all of this news with this eclipse it feels like they're trying to keep everyone in a sense of anxiety keep everybody really low that's a that's a really good way to shut people off from each other is to keep everybody down there in that bottom area all the time i think and i've talked in other videos about how this isn't good but i just wanted to remind everybody of this and then i had a piece of advice and i I've, I've told it to a couple of people around me and everyone's like, oh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Okay, good. Don't be worried because even if the worst happens, being worried won't do anything for you <laughs> um, except zap all of your energy and keep you down in this bottom part. But further, how about instead take the time to think about something that makes your heart feel happy? I've got a book I need to read. It's but it's like way down the list. I got a lot to do. But it it has to do with the neurons that they have found in the heart. And it's talking about how, you know, people who've gotten heart transplants from someone that they never met in real life, after they get the heart transplant, they suddenly start to like the things that person liked and the, the type of music that they loved, foods that they really liked. And I haven't even read this book yet. But doesn't it stand to reason if there's neurons in your heart and they're giving people heart transplants and the person never met the other person, but now they suddenly like all these things they never had any feelings about, but now they have a very strong feeling about a certain food or some type of music. Some kind of memory is being stored in those, in those cells and that it's the good stuff. Right. So if you focus on that, that good stuff, whatever your good stuff is, what I'm talking about is very simple. I'm talking about something that makes you happy. It doesn't matter how small it is. If it makes you happy, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, music is my first idea because that's just what I spend a lot of my days with. But maybe there's a kind of food that eating it just makes you happy. I didn't, I'm not saying go in, in your kitchen and eat, you know, like an entire container of cake frosting by yourself or something. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, unless you just really, I, I, I'm not going to tell anyone what to do with themselves about anything with that. Like, I'm just saying, take the time out 
to do some things that bring joy to your heart and let that feeling radiate outward. Hold it in the front of your mind to have coherence between your brain and your heart. We don't think about sometimes how important these things are, but if you are in your heart feeling a feeling and in your brain, you're feeling the opposite feeling. Now it's like you have two fields that are just incoherent with each other. What if we just took the time tomorrow while they're trying to freak everybody out to just feel some good old fashioned joy about anything and just allow yourself to feel it? It doesn't look all the stuff that you want to be upset and worry about. That's still going to be there later. OK, it's just so what difference does it make anyways? Screw it. Just who cares? Like you can go back to being upset about whatever that is afterwards, but maybe tomorrow in this moment where it's been made very clear that, I mean, I remember solar eclipses when I was a kid and you would, they give you the little glasses. Everybody goes outside to the playground or whatever. We see the thing. Ooh, oh, it's so cool. And then we went back freaking inside and just continued to exist normally. There wasn't, oh my gosh. You know, the, the plagues of locusts are going to <laughs> envelop the earth or whatever, you know? Okay. All right. Fine. The plagues of locusts are going to envelop the earth. The space velociraptors are, are coming. And it, let, let, let's say it's all happening. Oh my gosh. Do you want to spend the last moments being upset about whatever some stupid crap in the news was that I swear is so stupid. I can't believe that an adult person wrote it. But I don't want to blame AI either, even though there is some very obviously poorly, poorly programmed AI. But I would feel bad even blaming the AI. I think someone did this kind of stuff for a paycheck. I think people are doing this for paychecks. And I still can't believe that's the way people think about the world. It's so eyes wide shut. It's so Bill from Eyes Wide Shut. Everything's a financial transaction, no matter how stupid and worthless and unhelpful to literally every other person on earth it is. That shouldn't be the way things are. Everything is so dumb. <laughs> everything is so wrong. I'm just saying everything has been wrong for a long time. It's going to have to change. Everything is going to change. Look, there, I just told you, I'm, I, it's all going to change. But you know what? Doesn't it freaking have to by now, guys? I mean, look at this. We can't continue this way. It's too small, this box that they've put everyone in. It's too small. We don't fit in it. We never did anyway, but we, we don't anymore and we won't in the future. It's too small. You are more than your physical body. Pick whichever system you want to explain that. But it's the way it is. Some people like to explain it. You know, it's, so we have language that we talk to each other in. Those are words, the ones you look up in the dictionary, and everyone knows those words. But then on top of that, what we have done is we have put different systems for explaining the nature of things. And some people talk in terms of technology, and some people talk in terms of religion and religious concepts, and some people talk in terms of quantum physics, and some people talk in terms of video games. I personally, for me, the one that's helped me the most to understand a lot of this has been alchemy. But I understand that that's not everybody's language. Like, it's not even language. It's a system on top of language. And I understand that's not everyone's system. I have tried to learn all of these various systems so that I can communicate better these things. But it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard to get some of this across. So this isn't for everyone, this video, and it's different and weird, and I'm different and weird. I have just gone through the last four years of some really strange times. And, uh, I spent the last two weeks probably crying every single day. <laughs> Deep introspection. I haven't been fair to myself in a long time. I'm going to end this video with some, sorry, I got, I'm, I think I'm upset because I, I let this place get to me. <laughs> I let this place get to me and it's like, I want to help everybody. That's all this channel has been for all of these years. It's just thinking like, can I help people? I just want to find a way to make it 
this place better. But I, I'm not super great with just building physical things. Like <laughs> you guys, I mean, I'm I'm okay. Like I actually did take shop. <laughs> I was such a tomboy. But my birdhouse was was not that great. <laughs> um, I was much better at home ec and sewing than I was at shop. Mm. I mean, I'm okay, but you know. So I thought instead, maybe. <laughs> I could help people think about the world with me, with us. So I guess that's kind of what we've been doing here, because I still really believe things can get better, but I I feel like every time anything ever has that I've ever studied in human history, it's always been... It's always been because people's it's always been because people's minds have changed first. Every single thing that gets built, it's an idea first, it's a thought first, right? It's like my favorite Peter Gabriel song Mercy Street when he talks about how all of the buildings and all of the cars they were once just a dream in somebody's head. That's how important dreams are. Literally everything you see <laughs> that wasn't here already, everything that's been added by any person on earth was in their head first. And I just don't know why we keep allowing people to put things in there so that that's what comes back out everywhere. Why do we keep doing that? You don't have to do that. You know, there may be a lot of things you feel like you can't control in your life, but one of the things you absolutely can is what's going in there and what's coming back out because of what goes in there. You do have that. That's so powerful. If you could only fully understand how powerful that is, <laughs> you would not, you would not, you wouldn't waste any more time being afraid in this way that they're able to trigger people into being afraid. It's so beneath the standards of the Grand Budapest Hotel. This is disgraceful and it's beneath the standards of the Grand Budapest. I apologize on behalf of the hotel. These, these videos that, that I'm showing you, these clips that you're seeing while I'm talking now, are videos I took on New Year's Day 2024 of the sun. I'm not going to put any filters on them or contrast or any of the kind of color correction stuff I do a lot of times. I'm just going to put them in there raw and you see what you see there, but I'm telling you if I could explain to you what I saw that day when I was looking at the sun, it was insane. It was amazing. It was like a full double rainbow around the sun. I've never seen anything like it. And Yes, it was New Year's Day, but I had not been, you know, having any champagne or anything like that. I know a lot of people have been very disappointed. A lot of things have happened that have been very disappointing. Whole portions of my life personally have been incredibly disappointing. So I get it. Like, I understand that, but nothing's going to change if you can't. But it just seems to me that there's something better. It starts inside of every person. And if you just keep hanging on to every negative disappointment, you'll just keep getting what you've always gotten. And at some point, doesn't it just get old? Isn't it just so boring? I mean, that's the Truman Show. Right? Nothing's going to change if you're just looping the same negative merry-go-round over and over. And I, I do, 
I'm more disappointed in the alternative media people who are doing the fear mongering than I am in the the re- like I expect that garbage coming out of the regular media, but independent alternative media really guys, you're supposed to be the alternative. You're getting worse than they are. Shame on you. I don't want to sound like someone's mama, but damn, shame on you for real. That's terrible. I'm <laughs> sorry. Like that's just terrible. I know we've talked about some dark, deep stuff on this channel, but it's it's always been, it's always meant to be empowering to know that. Anyway, this video kind of just rolled right off the tracks, didn't it? I'm almost done with my coffee. So, I love you guys. Everything we do in this channel, every all our work comes from a place of love. And this deep feeling that the world can be better. And if there's anything, if there's anything that I can think of spending my whole life trying to do, it's to make the place better than when I got here for everybody. I was telling a friend of mine a story last night. So one of my earliest memories, actually it's not the earliest memory that I can remember, but it's one of them. My I was 2, I think, and I was on an elevator with my mother going up a tall building. And there were other people on this elevator and I was taking turns smiling at each person on this elevator like with my baby moon face just <laughs> looking at each person, getting eye contact, and smiling huge at them, each person. And finally, there was this one guy, and he was so grouchy, super frowny. Probably his lips had been frowning for so long, his mouth had been frowning for so long, he forgot how to even make it do something else. I think it was kind of maybe stuck that way a little bit. And he would not smile back at me, this man. He would not do it. So I leaned like, way out of my mom's arms, way into this man's face with my baby face. <laughs> when I edit this, I'll put a picture of what I looked like when I was two so you can kind of imagine. But I leaned right into this man's face. <laughs> and I smiled at him with full smile force, okay? Full baby smile power. All you people who have kids, you know what I'm talking about. Full baby smile power. That's, that's some hardcore power right there. And that guy couldn't help it. He could not help it. He smiled back at me. <laughs> I guess when I was that little and I didn't really understand anything or like whatever it is you come into this world understanding... I really did think that was my job. I thought my job was just to smile at people until they smile back. I thought that's why I'm here. I'm supposed to make people smile back at me. I'm supposed to smile at people and get them to smile back at me. And if I can do that, then that's my reason for existing. Maybe everything's just really that simple. I don't know. I, sometimes I think we make things way too complicated. I just realized I've been talking for forever. I hope you guys have a good evening. And I hope you guys have a good day tomorrow. And I know there's some bullshit afoot. I'm aware that, that stuff is going to happen. But just think if we can raise the emotional intelligence of how we respond to things, it will be better for everyone. It'll be better for ourselves and everyone. You know? And I just felt like saying that, so... I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.